So I was planning on doing a Circle CI video today, but when I was trying to install dependencies with Yarn, I kept getting 503 errors and the service was unavailable. Uh, Facebook was down today, they had an outage, so I figured this is probably related to that, and so I'm just gonna wait a day and do this tomorrow. Now you may be noticing a sound difference. I moved my mic today. Let me know if the sound of this is better compared to yesterday. Hopefully it's a little bit louder. Uh, so anyway, today's video, what we're going to do instead of doing Circle CI is talk about the architecture for a notification system. So a few people are asking me how I'd go about building a notification system. And so I was thinking about how would I build it. I'm actually going to build it in the future. But in this video, I kind of want to go over uh, how I would architect it or all the pieces that are involved in building a notification sy system. Now, this is a very basic notification system with the following features. Uh, so first off, when a user does something, maybe they like a post, they comment on a video, we'd like to send a notification. Um, secondly, we want to be able to view all these notifications that I have. So like if someone likes my post, I want to be able to view that notification. Uh, and I also want to be able to see whether I've seen that notification before or push red or not on it um, and clear it. And then I may want to introduce a queue of some sort. I will talk about why you may want to queue uh, in a little bit. Uh, and then also trigger push notifications in the browser uh, and be able to toggle the push notifications on and off. All right, so I made a little diagram that we're just going to walk through of how I envision this working. So imagine that you're on your computer, you navigate to the website, and you like a post um, or you comment on a post. So this is going to send a request to our server and what our server is going to do is it's going to handle this like it's going to know who you are as a user that liked this post and we're going to have some kind of business logic that creates the like now it's good to know that what data we're going to have when the user creates or likes a post or comments on a post so we're going to have the user id of the user who uh, is liking the post we're also going to have the post id of the post that they want to create a like on. So we have that information on us and maybe this business logic just creates a like in the database. Uh, so basically we've created a like in the database. We also want to create a notification. And so what we could do is we could also basically create uh, a row in the database, create a notification uh, table and create a notification in the database right in our business logic after we create say a like or create a comment um, But we're going to talk about a different approach as well uh, Paired with that I kind of want to go over what your notification table may look like first So I was thinking about uh, how I would go about actually storing the notification itself And I thought of kind of two different methods depending on what your application needs are so first off I was thinking of a table that's kind of generic uh, that's called post notification. So the idea is someone did something to your post. Maybe they liked the post, maybe they commented the post, maybe they uploaded the post, uh, maybe they reported the post. Something happened to your post is basically the gist of this notification. So in this case, we would store an ID, which is a string. We'd store whether the user has read the notification or not. Uh, we're going to have the message. So this is going to say, hey, uh, person A liked your post or person B reported your post or whatever message we want to say to the user um, that we're sending the notification to. And then this is going to be an ID to so we know which post is associated to. So I know that's my post about dogs. Um, and so we can say, hey, user B liked your post on dogs. Uh, so we can grab, get that information and we can connect the notification to what post it's associated to by storing the post ID. And then lastly, we're just storing the user ID of the person we want to send the notification to. Uh, and so what this might look like is uh, given a post ID and a user ID, uh, what we would do is we would fetch the person who owns the post by the post ID and we would create a notification for them. Uh, whenever a user does a like on it. Uh, and so that is one approach is we have a single table that handles multiple types of different types of notifications, all associated to say a post. Now another way you could do this is you could kind of split it up per notification and you could say uh, when a like event happens, put that in the like notification table 
and when a comment happens, but then the comment notification table um, and so on. You could have a report notification and for each different type, you could do that. So this may make sense if you want to treat those notifications in a very different manner and this generic table does not work as well. And so you'd still have like an ID for the notification, whether it's read or not, the user who you're going to send the notification to. But now instead of having the it like associated to a post, you still could have that, but we're directly associating it to a like. Uh, so we know uh, which like it's uh, connected to or a comment that it's connected to. Uh, and this may also be a valid choice. Now, uh, this really depends on your project, which one you want to implement this approach or this approach. And there may be even another approach besides this that's even better than this. Um, but I'm leaning towards doing this at least for a simple notification uh, state at first and then doing something like this maybe in a uh, more complex if I have a ton of different notifications that I want to represent something like that. Uh, anyway, so that's kind of how I see storing the notifications in the database. Uh, as far as actually creating the notifications, if you want to keep it dead simple, uh, this is what I would do is when you create the like right after that, you actually create the notification in the database. And then whenever a user goes to your website, you're just going to fetch all the notifications for a user from the database and you can update the red as they read the stuff or whatnot. But what you could do is you could introduce a queue. The idea being with uh, having like a separate queue uh, is the notifications don't need to be happen instantaneously. Um, or at least they don't have to happen within this request. So we may take some time. So like whenever I like a post, we could say that the like like correctly happened, save that in the database. Uh, and then a few seconds later, we could send the request for the notification. We don't have to have that all happen in the same request. You can send it to a queue and have the queue just work in the background sending notifications is the idea. So that's one thing you could think about doing. Um, it's totally unnecessary at first, especially if you have a small project. I would just recommend uh, putting it in wherever your business logic is when you create the like, then create the notification in the database. But this is just another approach that you could do is you could send uh, a notif basically tell your queue, hey, create a notification. The queue might, you know, wait some time and then create the notification in the database. And this is another good one if, like, you only want to send the notification uh, maybe five hours in advance. You could say, hey, queue, create that notification in five hours. Or you could also put a timestamp on the notification table too, like uh, view the notification at this particular date or just compare it to when the notification was created. So you could add a created at on the notification. In fact, that's actually a really good thing to add. So I would recommend adding like when the notification was created. Anyway, this is just a very general architecture. You'll notice I didn't mention really any programming language. You could use any server, any database here. Um, and I'm going to be implementing this with using Postgres, using uh, probably a bull queue, uh, and using Node.js for my server. But what I suggest to you guys is try implementing this yourself and see, compare it against, I'm going to be implementing this as well. Pick whatever strategy you want to implement this. Uh, you don't even have to follow the architecture that I outlined here, but you can if you want to. And then compare what your solution looks like to mine. And then we can take a look at why certain things are a good decision when implementing this compared to others. Uh, but yeah, I hope this was helpful. Kind of just these are some of my thoughts that I was thinking about when I was like, huh, I want to build a notification system. This is kind of the stuff that I think about. Anyway, thanks, guys.